Abraham chapter 31, verses 6 down through to 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. I have been toying with the idea of losing the Christmas jumper, but I'd, for those who follow on YouTube, I think it would be quite an interesting thing to see on the, uh, what day is it? The 20th of, this, of November. Anyway, um, we are, we're, we're in the middle of a series looking at um, this I know, because we're looking at truths that we can know about God. There are things that we can know about God, and which then in turn um, impact us. Uh, they, they impact us and so they help change the way that we might live and approach our life because of who God is. And this morning, I want to look at this, this idea that God is the God of faithfulness. It's no secret that in life, there it can be full of disappointments. We looked at that last week. Disappointments come because so much in life um, doesn't last and isn't reliable. And we will go through life quite often feeling let down a lot. Perhaps it's just being let down by expectations that we have not being met. Perhaps, like me, I get let down by inanimate objects like technology, my phone, my laptop not working the moment I need it to. Perhaps you feel let down by your favorite TV show and its finale, and it was just really disappointing. Um, perhaps you feel let down by customer service. Perhaps you felt let down by a teacher, a mentor a politician, or maybe even a church leader. Um, perhaps you've been let down by someone who didn't show up the moment you needed them. A friend wasn't there when you needed them most. A family member has distanced themselves. Perhaps you just feel let down by life and all its surprises, the unexplained moments, or life throwing these unjustified hurts and pains towards us. There's not a lot that's truly consistently reliable in life. Not everything in life is like a Nokia 3210. You know, the, or a Casio watch. They're, they're reliable. I read um, earlier that a lady found um, a, her, her Casio watch. It had been buried in the garden for eight years. And when she discovered it, the, the time was out by just like two minutes or something like that. We want that kind of reliability in life, don't we? Do we? It's not landing as well as I thought it would. I know in this room that there are a lot of memories uh, that, we, that we hold collectively of ways we felt let down. Some of you, I know, have been let down by the church uh, or a church leader or, or a person in authority. And part of your process, a uh, part of your being here in church is, uh, is part of a healing process. But can I be really, really honest with you this morning? I will also let you down. At some point, I mean, I, I'm not, I won't mean to, I won't mean to, honestly, but I will almost definitely let you down. I thought it best to just be honest this morning. I'm nothing special. Don't put your hope in me. Some of you are like, that's the furthest thought from our minds, Matt, don't worry. <laughs> but I will let you down, and you will probably let me down. Some of you already have. No, no, no. <laughs> but I know this, I know this that God will never let you down. God will never let you down. God's more reliable than a Nokia 3210 or a Casio watch, more consistent, trustworthy, faithful than anything or anyone. He will never let you down. And so I just want to pull two simple things from the reading that we had this morning. It's like a promise of God, a promise of God which you can be sure of that he will never let you down. The first was that he will never leave you. God says, never will I leave you. And he says, never will I forsake you. So this I know. Another joke that hasn't been landing is my joke about this I know Vember. It's a series in November, which we've called this I know Vember. 
I'm just not as funny as I thought I was, Gareth. At least this morning. This I know, God is the God of faithfulness. And his first promise to us is to never leave us. Often in life, when we feel let down, it's because there's been some sort of absence. Either they weren't there, they didn't show up, or they were there and then they left. There was an absence. But God's promise to us is to always be with us. I remember once while I was training to be a vicar, our college had these mo- like multiple weekends away where we got in lots of um, teaching and, and learning and training. And what you're meant to do is you're meant to show up on time and then head to the first gathering where they gave you all the information for the weekend. And that weekend, I was actually involved in helping out with something. And so I was meant to be at this first gathering um, and I was going to stand up and then everyone would sort of look at me and go, okay, that's, that's the guy who's helping with that sort of thing. Anyway, I decided I wasn't turning up that time, that weekend, because a mate of mine was getting married, and I wanted to be there instead. I thought, no one will notice if I just slip in slightly late. Anyway, I'm told that in this gathering, 300 plus people, the dean of the college was leading the meeting, and then at one point said, this is what's happening, and and the people involved in that is Hannah. Hannah, could you stand up? And Matt Bray, could you stand up? Of course, Hannah stood up, and I didn't stand up because I wasn't there. (laughs) And uh, the dean then says, um, which haunts me to this day, and I'm reminded of it by many of my, uh, many of the people I trained with, he said, Matt Bray, where are you? And then my tutor, I think, was feeling really embarrassed as well, and he's frantically texting me going, Matt Bray, where are you? Where was I? I was living at large at the wedding reception. I was having a great time. (laughs) Of course, when I did eventually arrive, And I was extremely apologetic. My absence had let them down um, big time in that moment. Um, But I, particularly thinking about Christmas at the moment, I I love Christmas because there's a central message to Christmas, which is that God is not distant, God is not uninterested, and God is not far off, but he's near and he's with us. I love knowing that across the country and even across the world, Someone, a child, an adult, someone is going to read these words from Matthew at a school nativity or a carol concert or a church service. They're going to read that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's not just a promise of God, but it's one that he's actually already fulfilled. Through Jesus, God is present in the world. And that's true even when it seems unlikely, even when it feels hard to believe, even in our deepest pain and our deepest suffering, God is with us. He promises to never leave us, and God will never let us down. The other week, we had our first experience of one of our boys getting lost in a public place. I say we, it was me, Fiona wasn't there. Bonfire night, bonfire night, and we went to uh, the fireworks at Sherwell Valley, super busy and very, very dark, and I had the buggy with our youngest in there, and our eldest, Bez, who's five, uh, was walking alongside, and he, had, he was wearing these ear defenders on, which were obviously really effective for what I'm about, for the reason I'm about to tell you in a moment. There was a small gap as we were trying to make our way through the crowds of people, and he went on ahead, but I couldn't get through because of the buggy, and I'm sort of just watching my five-year-old walk away in the distance with these ear defenders, and I start calling his name, Bez, Bez, come back. But he didn't come back, he didn't hear me, and suddenly I lost him. And then some very kind mums um, saw the panic in my face. I'm like, don't worry, we'll go get him while I'm still stuck with the, with the buggy um, there. Uh, and uh, don't worry, um, that's only ever happened once and it will never happen again. Uh, no need to call anyone um, about that. Um, within a couple of minutes, he did come back. That pro- it didn't feel very long to me, and I was quite confident that, that we, we were okay. I, I knew lots of people around the place um, as well. But I remember when he came back, and obviously he was clearly very upset. And he just he looked at me, and I knelt down to like, hug him as he came back, and he said, Daddy, why couldn't I find you? Why couldn't I see you? And I said, well, Bez, I, I, was, I was here the whole time. You just walked ahead of me a little bit. You you couldn't hear me when I was calling your name, but I was right here. I was always right here. And sometimes I feel like my son, when I'm talking to, to God, I say, God, why couldn't I see you in that moment? 
Why, why couldn't I feel you when, when that was going on in my life? Why were you distant from me in those moments? But I sense God saying the same back to me. No, I, I was always there. I, I was there. I am here. I'm always here. Never will I leave you. Perhaps this morning, you might feel that God's a bit absent from your life or a bit distant, far off or even uninterested in your life. But can I encourage you with the truth that he's never been closer? It might be dark and it might be hard to see him. It might be chaotic and it might be noisy. You might have ear defenders on. And I'm going to use this story again because the metaphor just extends quite far. You might, not, you might not be listening to him. You might not be able to hear him. It's hard to hear him. It might feel like for you it's a really long time and you can't sense it. But he's close. He's there. And he will never, ever let you down. Never will I leave you, says God. The, the first part of that promise and here's the second part of God's promise, is that never will I forsake you. God promises to be with us, and he promises to never give up on us. He's never going to give up on you. This is the perfect moment for Rick Astley to appear on screen, isn't it? Perhaps Rick Astley is up there with Nokia and Casios in reliability. Um, I've shared, I've shared our story of how we came to plant Bay Church quite a few times, and for time's sake, I can't sort of give you the whole full story again, but I remember quite early on in our journey of planting and setting up Bay Church, I was sort of asking God for a sign. I was asking God for, for a sign to confirm that actually he was behind this decision for us to move our family 150 yards to the southwest to start and plant a new church. And I was asking, I was asking that question because I, I felt like we were asked to leave by our diocese. And so in one sense, I felt, well, has, has God given, given up on me? And is he trying to, like, push me as far away as possible? <laughs> is he trying to get rid of me? Is, is he in this? Is he part of this? And so I was, I've been asking God for a sign. And I had lots of friends who were planting churches or had planted churches. And they, would, they had these amazing stories of when they were asking God for a sign and, and God gave them this amazing moment. Like either the, the church building they were planting into, they, they had history, their, their family, like their great, great, great grandparents got married there or something. And it was this amazing. Or some people were praying and they felt like God giving them a picture or a word. And as they visited the city or as they visited the church, they saw what they had seen in their prayers on the church walls or in the church building or on the, on the city motto. And I was like, I want something like that. Actually, recently I, I heard a, a, someone I know has planted a church into Rio in Brazil. And their son, I think their teenage son, had, was praying and had a vision of this really specific bench. And they went to visit the church in Rio. And then in, in the church grounds was this exact bench that the son had seen in this vision. I was like, God, I want, I want something like that. Anyway, I wanted, a, I wanted a moment like that. I wanted to know that God hadn't given up on us. And actually, he was behind. He was with us. He wasn't going to forsake us in this moment. It was during one of the many lockdowns, and I forget which one, but we were doing, you know, do you remember online church? I don't know if you remember online church. Well, many churches were doing lots of serious online churches or prayer meetings on Zoom. The church I was a part of, we had sort of had our own Sunday morning breakfast show where we had lots of fun games and things like that. And I, for whatever reason, I needed a tea towel for this really silly game. And I, I just ran into the, the, the kitchen in the church, and I couldn't find one anywhere. And I was opening just random drawers everywhere. And I opened this just random drawer sort of at the bottom, saw this red tea towel, and I, um, and I, and I, and I picked it up, and I got it. I sort of found it over here, and, then, and, and I just popped it on the... Um, I popped it on the thing here for the game, and I didn't think much of it until I began to realize um, what was on the tea towel, this random tea towel that I don't know whose it was or anything like that, but I just picked up this tea towel here. And so God gave lots of my friends visions, signs, family connections, and when I was asking God for a sign, he gave me a tea towel. It says Torbe, all the, all the places that we now call home. It's, um, and um, you might have needed a bit more than that from God in that moment. But uh, that's exactly what I needed. Because I'm quite, I'm quite funny, actually, in my opinion. I'm quite funny. And for God to, um, 
to do that. It, it, it was in that moment, it's, it's, and I've used that example to make you laugh. Actually, lots of, lots of confirmations happened over those months of, of God saying, no, I am with you. I haven't forsaken you. I am behind this. I do want you to do this. And God's promise to us to never give up on us, that's true for all of us. No matter how many times we fail, no matter how many times we fall, no matter how many times we mess up or get it wrong, God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. I felt this most, um, most in my life when I was 20 years old. I had a friend called Luke, and I really respected, valued his input in my life. And when I, around that age, that was when I'd um, left church completely. I'd become very disillusioned with God, very disillusioned with church. I had a lot of pain. I'd felt let down by a lot of people, and I'd also let down a lot of people myself. I really wasn't in a good place. I was very, very angry at God, and I was very angry at the church. I was angry at everyone. I wasn't much fun to be around. I was cynical. I was rude. But my friend Luke committed to me like no one else did. And he committed to me every week. He, we met up and we chat for a couple of hours uh, just in a coffee shop somewhere. And I give, him, I give him a really hard time about God and about church and about the Bible. And, I, and it, can't, it can't have been fun for him at all. But, he, but he, he committed to it every week. And he did that for eight months eight months, every week, just met with me. Let, me. let me have a go at him. Let me have a go at God. And we just take it all. And then one week when we were catching up, he said, do you know what, Matt, HTB, Holy Trinity Brompton from London, they've just started a new church in St. Peter's Brighton. And um, he said, uh, we went last week and, and you should come too. And that Sunday, I, I don't know why, but I, I decided to go along. And I remember standing at the doors of St. Peter's in Brighton and before walking through the doors, I remember praying to God. I remember praying, saying to God, this is your last chance. This is your last chance. And if, if not, then I don't think I'm ever going to come back to you or to church again. And I walked in the doors and I felt completely like I'd been welcomed home. I felt like I had, yeah. It's, it's still that moment that I met Fiona there, my wife. I met some friends. I became a vicar. They tricked me into that. And, and it, I, I, felt like I'd, I felt like all the things that I was carrying, all that, all that anger and all that hurt and all that resentment, I felt it was just gone in that moment. And in that moment, I felt peace. I felt forgiven. I felt loved by God. I'm so grateful that Luke, my friend, didn't give up on me, that he just committed to me in the way that he did. I'm even more grateful that God didn't give up on me in those moments as well. God is faithful. He's the God of faithfulness. He will never let us down. Never will he leave us and never will he forsake us. He promises to be with us and he promises to never give up on us. And you might ask, Matt, how do you know though? How do you know that God will never let us down. Well, this I know. I know this because he's already proven his faithfulness to us. Jesus was faithful to the point of death on a cross. He endured the most painful, horrific death, both physically and spiritually. He did that for you and me. He died for you and me so that we might be free from our sin, so that we might be forgiven uh, by, by God. We might receive the love and peace of God, and we might experience life in all its fullness. I know, I know that God will never let you down because he's already done all that he needs to when he died for you. If you were the last person on earth, Jesus would have died for you. He has proven his faithfulness, and he does continue to prove his faithfulness, and he will never, ever let you down. Amen.